My name is Bryce Kala, and I'm a dreamer. Both waking and sleeping, my rich and vivid imagination has been keeping life interesting since I was very little. So I'm going to share those dreams with you, and I'd love for you to share your dreams with me. Let's do this together in a little place that I like to call Somewhere in Dream World. And welcome to the Midnight Notion Somewhere in Dream World podcast, the podcast about all things dreams, both waking and sleeping. This episode could have been brought to you by keys. That's right. If you need to get into a door that is locked, you're going to need a key. Unless I suppose that door doesn't have a keyhole, then too bad. You're not getting in that door. But if the door does have a keyhole, you're going to need a key. Sometimes they're made out of metal. If you're in some sort of medieval fantasy book, it could be made out of bone or some other substance. But regardless, the key will help you get into that door. So find a key, get in that door, and be safe because there's something behind you. Uh, Hello, my name is Bryce Kala. I'm the host. I am always the host. And today, I have no special guest because it is finally here, the episode I've been promising since, I don't know, episode three. For about a million years, I've been saying that I've been building up listener dreams and that I'm saving them for a listener dreams only podcast episode. And guess what? The day has come. It's here today. We're going to do it. All dreams by listeners, all call-ins and emails, and it's going to be a grand old time. And I got a lot of them, and I don't think I'm going to even be able to get through all of them. So we better just start right now. It's time to go to sleep. Remember, friends, if you'd like to submit a dream to this podcast, you can do so by emailing podcast at midnightnotion.com or phoning it in at 612-643-0944. I've been saying that for 10 episodes, and now you'll finally get to hear what that sounds like, though I've already read and played a few phone call dreams uh, before. This one, this whole episode is devoted to that. So uh, we're going to get right into it uh, with a, uh, we're going to start light. We got some light dreams, we got some weird dreams, and we got some creepy dreams. So we'll intermix them and kind of mix the moods, offset the creepy with the fun and happy ones, and uh, see where we go from there. Sound good to you? Great. We're going to start off with a fun dream by Christine. Christine is emailing in, and um, Christine says, I had a dream. I was attending a group therapy session on a farm. At one point, the Backstreet Boys showed up. I remembered that Brian was always my favorite and got excited that he was there. Everyone talked for a while, but when the BSB got up to leave slash perform, Brian was standing at like four foot six and substantially smaller than everyone in the room. I remember feeling disappointed and could see the top of his head when standing next to him. I didn't like that feeling in the dream. Subsequently, I never got to hear them perform in my dream. I woke up after the feeling of disappointment from my favorite BSB not living a taller life. LOL. (laughs) I always read LOL as LOL because that... Unless if you capitalize it, if it's LOL when it's all capitalized, then it's a... then it's an acronym if you put periods behind it, uh, between it, between the letters, after each letter, words. Uh, so I always read it as lol because I think it's funny. But anyway, thank you for the dream, Christine. I'm so sorry to hear that your dreams were crushed, that Brian was not, as you might say, larger than life. <laughs> that That joke was for me. It was just for me. I don't care if none of you get that. I am a fan of the Backstreet Boys. Not a hardcore fan. I actually didn't really follow them much after 
the Black and Blue record. I know that they have other records since then, probably multiple, and I know that they're still uh, active, but I don't know. I just got into different music, but I still do appreciate what they did in uh, the pop scene in the late 90s, and I appreciate the stream for that very reason. And uh, and, and, and Christina, I, just, just so that you can uh, be happier in your waking life, you can know for sure, I looked it up, Brian is actually five feet eight inches, so he's a whole, he's a whole foot and two inches taller than he was in your dream. So worry no more. He's at least model height. <laughs> good for him and good for you. Thanks for the dream, Christine. Now the next dream comes from Nate C from Woodbury. Nate uh, submitted this dream via the form that I used to have available on the Midnight Notion website. That is no longer available because I think it's just easier to send an email. So Nate is writing in from, from the form. Uh, he's coming from the past to bring this nice, simple little dream to you. Uh, Nate says he met Michael Eisner, who is, was, this is, this is a side note for those of you who don't know Michael Eisner. Uh, he was the CEO and I think chairman of the Walt Disney Company from somewhere in the 80s to about 2005. Um, Michael Eisner in this dream was played by John Favreau, who is um, an actor and he's directed a few of the um, Iron Man movies. He's been in Iron Man as uh, is Happy, Iron Man's friend slash assistant person. And he is also he also directed the most recent version, uh, the live action version or partially CG version, I should say of the jungle book and it was pretty pretty spectacular so anyway uh nate said he met michael eisner as played by john favreau in a car at disney on the way from a buzz lightyear ride to a parking lot and it was in a how i met your mother style sitcom these are all the de all the details that i got from nate but i'm 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 incredibly curious to see how this played out so there's a lot of laugh tracks is what I'm assuming because How I Met Your Mother is just filled with audience laughter. So I'm assuming a car pulls up with Michael Eisner in it, but it's played by John Favreau and he's in a car and just there's, you know, I wonder, Nate, were you watching a lot of Disney movies at the time? Was Disney really heavy on your mind? Are you learning something about Disney? Are you going to Disney World um, I'm, I'm just curious. It seems like a very Disney heavy uh, theme. Uh, we have John Favreau, who's directing Disney stuff currently and working in Disney. We have Michael Eisner, the CEO. We have Buzz Lightyear. We have a car ride. And How I Met Your Mother is actually <laughs> the only standout thing that's different. But it's not even How I Met Your Mother. It's just a sitcom. So... I don't know, maybe Disney should get working on that. <laughs> anyway, thank you for the dream, Nate. Kind of kooky, but uh, interesting nonetheless. Uh, speaking of kooky, uh, how about we get to a call-in dream? This one comes from Rhett. Hey, uh, so I had one last night that was really weird. I'm in, like, New York, and I'm at this guy's apartment, and something goes wrong. I think I lied to him. And so I take a chair, and I, like, I just run outside of his apartment, with his chair, it's like 4.30 in the morning, I end up at a White Castle, and they're giving out flu shots, <laughs> giving out flu shots at the White Castle, and I'm like, I think I'm going to pass on that, so the lady at the, you know, she's taking my order, you know, she's like, hey, you know, she's trying to make jokes with me about how early it is, and I'm like, no, it is early. And she's, like, saying that it's not early, and I, I don't know, it's very, very odd, but she's very nice. Uh, and so uh, I leave, and I run into Sigourney Weaver on the side of the road, and we're talking about people flipping genders and stuff. And she's like, she's like, yeah, I, I you know, I, I don't, like, you know, what's the deal? I was like, well, you know. If you're gonna if you're gonna feel sexy, like you gotta feel sexy the way you want to feel sexy. And then she took me in her pickup truck, and we made out. And uh, then I woke up. Oh, also funny thing, my pillow was missing when I woke up. Like I had thrown it at the foot of my bed, and it was really, uh, really weird. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thank you, Rhett, for the call. Uh, really interesting dream uh, to the average person who, you know, some people say that they don't dream at all or they only, only dream every once in a while. 
And so I'm I want to I want to assume that those people might hear a dream like this and go, wow, none of this makes any sense. And so when I hear a dream like this, I always want to I want to dig deeper. I want to find out what is the connecting line and and what it, what is the thing that brings some of these elements together again i repeat this over and over i'm not a psychologist i'm not here to solve your problems or to even tell you what your brain is doing while you're asleep i'm just here to start the conversation and i hope that you will will continue the conversation please leave comments on what your interpretations are because they might be vastly different from mine but what i'm what i'm hearing is some really interesting stuff it almost sounds to me like a politically charged dream like there may have been some sort of political discussion or you know we live in a world where social media can cause some very very vocal uh, well not vocal but uh, text-based uh, discussions and maybe they can get a little heated but uh, the part of this dream was at the at the white castle when you're arguing with the person about a thing that is actually happening I feel like that happens a lot that we get in a lot of arguments over facts and that there are a lot of people who who haven't yet been in a place where they can learn that those facts are true like they've been taught something else their entire life and haven't ever been able to question it and that's um, unfortunate but you know it's kind of the climate that we're in today and I don't want to drive any politics on this show this isn't a political show it's a talk about dreams but I wonder uh, Rhett, you maybe you could tell me more, um, but I, it feels like, you know, there's a lot of issues that show up in here. Flu shots. We've got, um, you know, uh, talking about um, gender identity and we have an argument about something that is true, but someone who believes that it's not. And um, or it, it just seems interesting to me. So I wonder if there was something in that that was linking. Uh, I don't know. I could be reading too far into it and of course maybe you were just watching aliens and you saw Sigourney Weaver and what you were eating White Castle at the same time who knows it could have been a million different things I don't know you tell me what you think and listeners you tell me what you think I'd love to hear your ideas of what this dream is about so thank you Rhett once again for submitting that dream much much appreciated thank you for your listenership all right this next dream comes from Noel or Noel. I don't know exactly how to pronounce your name. I, I apologize if I mispronounced it, but uh, I'm going to say Noel because I think that's what it looks like to me. Noel says that uh, says this. So in my dream, I'm lying in bed sleeping when my jaw gets dislocated on the right side and it's hurting really bad at this point and I'm frantic trying to find a way to get it back in place without breaking it but it shatters and now I have broken bones in my mouth that I'm spitting up onto my pillow piece by piece jagged bones coming up one after another and I'm trying to hold my jaw together while trying to get on my phone to get dad to come and call 911 because I couldn't talk and then I woke up Eesh. now we had a broken jaw a uh, forcibly broken jaw last week when Pam was on the podcast in her dream. Uh, but I don't know. We haven't talked much in this podcast, I believe, about broken teeth and broken jaws and just bones in general. But this is a pretty common dream. Maybe not so much the jaw breaking, but uh, teeth falling out for sure. I, I bet a bunch of you have had teeth falling out dreams. I've actually had the teeth falling out dreams and a lot of books that you can find on dreams that really hone in on specific symbols and, and really talk about how each symbol means a certain thing. Those types of books will always say that the teeth falling out dream is either like a loss of something. Sometimes it's financial. Sometimes it's just general sickness, like you're sick or you're unhealthy or um, like I said, financial, you're losing money. Or you're losing something that's a part of you, a, a really big, important thing. Sometimes it's something to do with self-image where you maybe don't have a, a very good self-image or you're losing self-confidence in a certain way. Um, or you just, like I said, there's so many options. You could have just watched a movie and saw a jaw break 
and it was really painful. Um, that's one thing that I, I haven't talked much about on this podcast. I'm really curious about what dreams would be like without movies. We see a lot of stuff in movies and TV and we read a lot of, oh, I guess reading is different, but we see, we're very visual. We see a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff on the TV, uh, a lot of different types of content. And I imagine that a lot of it shows up in our dreams. And I wonder how creative we would be without having seen, seen any of that. Like, I've seen a lot of movies where people have broken bones. And every time I cringe, I have this real like empathy pain thing going on where whenever I see somebody that's in pain, I feel it sort of, I mean, not, not really feel it, but I I feel like I feel it (laughs) and I cringe every time I see something like that. And I have, I guess I did break my one. I, I broke my wrist or fractured my wrist when I was in about seventh grade. So I know what it feels like on a minor scale, but I've never broken a jaw or a rib or had teeth fall out other than the ones that I guess. Oh, you know what? That's a good point. We've all had teeth fall out as we grow up. We lose teeth. So we've all experienced that. And maybe for some it's more visceral and more like Ugh. and maybe for for others it just doesn't matter as much. But maybe that's because maybe we all have that dream because we've all actually experienced that. But what my question is, for things we haven't experienced, like falling or flying, or I don't know, maybe you have fallen, but the the flying dreams, you know, and and anything anything like giant monsters or whatever we haven't actually had in our lives, is that induced by movies and television and books and video games? Like, would we still imagine similar things in our sleeping state? Had we not seen them in media, I'm like we're going. I'm going back to Rhett's dream. He had Sigourney Weaver in there. Obviously, he doesn't know. Well, I guess it's not obvious either. There's a lot of questions uh, that I'm answering myself. Uh, but maybe he doesn't know Sigourney Weaver. But he's definitely seen her in some sort of way that he was able to identify her in the dream state. Had he not ever seen any movies with her in it, would it be just another actress that he had seen? Would it be a person that he knows? Would it be just a random faceless person? Uh, who knows? I'm, I'm really curious how that works. So if you know anybody that's in some sort of, I don't know, some sort of indigenous tribe out in the middle of nowhere that hasn't had any access to any sort of media, I would love to hear what their dreams are like. Because that's just a really fascinating idea that I just came up with now, and I want to know the answer. If you know something, leave a comment and let me know. Or send an email, podcast at midnightnotion.com. Anywho, thank you very much for that dream, Noel. This next dream comes from Kristen from Minneapolis. Kristen got this into the form as well, just like uh, like Nate did. And um, Kristen says that uh, this is a recurring dream that she's had since she was a small child. Um, Kristen writes, I still have this dream about three to four times a year. I'm walking on the edge of the Grand Canyon and I suddenly have the urge to jump. I do it and it feels so good and I'm screaming "Wee!" all the way down when suddenly I realize I'm going to hit the bottom and die. Sometimes I wake before I hit the bottom, but when I do hit, I don't die. I bounce. I bounce on the ground of the gear, of the Grand Canyon, and I bounce off the walls, and basically I bounce all over the Grand Canyon, screaming in glee. I've never visited the Grand Canyon, and I never will. In fact, to this day, whenever I'm on some kind of cliff, or even the roof of a building, the feeling to jump off because I think it would be fun, is overwhelming, and I usually have to leave this situation. Wow. Kristen, I have to say right off the bat, before I even get into the the subject of the dream, I have that same exact thing with cliffs. It's not necessarily this want to jump off, but I do know that I, I associate the feeling of falling as a fun feeling. I always went on the swings at at school pr- playgrounds and I just 
I, I like roller coasters and I just that there's that feeling of your stomach that you get in your stomach. Those little I don't know how to describe it other than it's just a fun feeling and I, I, it scares me a little bit. So edges kind of get to me and I lived in Colorado for a few years and we would go hiking and I'd actually if if everybody was looking over an edge and oh yeah look at the scenery i actually had to sit down because there's this weird magnetic pull and even today i mean actually a few uh, about a week ago i went to the mall of america and i was on the fourth floor of the rotunda rotundra um and i was looking over the edge and there's a there's a nice bar there and 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 i just I, there's this weird feeling of what would it feel like to fall? And I would never, ever jump. And it scares me that those feelings come to me. So I actually have to back off. It's a it's a weird, it's not a fear of heights. It's a fear of jumping. That is the strangest thing that I've ever admitted on a podcast, I think. But it's a true thing, and I feel it. And I'm sure there are other people feeling that same exact way. I would like to see the Grand Canyon, but I, I know that I would not bounce if I jumped off the side. So I would definitely be weary. And I do know that I went to the um, the Sears Tower, which is formerly Sears Tower, now Willis Tower in Chicago. And they have this glass platform on the top floor where you can kind of stand in this glass box over the side of the building. It hangs out the side of the building and you can look down below you. And it just, I can't do it. I can't do it. I just, I went out, I did actually go into the box, but it was for seconds. Like I stepped into it and I just felt super uncomfortable and I had to step out. I don't know. I don't trust glass enough. You know, maybe, maybe I am actually afraid of heights and I'm just unwilling to admit it. I'm admitting it right now. I might be afraid of heights, but here's the thing. I've been on so many roller coasters and I love those. And I don't have a problem with the height of the coaster, but uh, maybe it's because I'm secured. I'm locked into, you know, I've got a shoulder harnesses and a seat belt and all that stuff. Uh, but something about edges really, really just ugh, ugh. So I feel ugh. I mean, it's good to know that this dream has an ounce of fun to it, that you're at least enjoying the fall. There's a part of um, worrying about the death as you come closer to the bottom. And I think a lot of people have experienced the falling dreams. I think that's one of the most recurring dreams that people have. Uh, but at least you get to bounce back. So that's that's an up, right? Uh, maybe positive things are happening in your life and uh, every bad situation that comes at you. Kristen, I bet you just bounce back. I'm going to put money on it right now, and that money is $0. But I bet, I'm willing to bet, Kristen, that, uh, that, that you're a fighter and that you make it through every situation, or m most of them anyway. So maybe uh, check when these dreams are happening. Are they happening after you've recovered from something, or are they happening as you're having troubles deciding what to do? Uh, I'd like to know that. So let me know in the comments below. Thank you once more for that dream, Kristen, and uh, many pleasant dreams to you in the future. Uh, that is all I have time for. Uh, can you believe it? We actually had to, uh, I, I had to skip over some dreams. I have a bunch of dreams left. So, so if you've submitted a dream and you haven't heard it yet, don't fret. It's coming someday soon. I promise. I promise before I'm living into that promise. I will do it again. Uh, next time so but for now that ends the dream segment now it's time to wake up now remember folks i talk a lot about sleeping dreams but this is the podcast about all things dreams so if you have a waking dream that you want to share if you want to accomplish something in your life you can do that here too. You can write it just same as the, the sleeping dreams. You can write it into podcast at midnightnotion.com or you can call it in at 612-643-0944. This podcast is about all dreams. And I have to, with that, announce that one of my dreams is going to be coming true very, very soon. I've talked about it before. But uh, Midnight Notion is near and dear to me. That's the music that I make. It's the music that you hear on this podcast. And uh, it's more music to come. 
I said that I wanted to start working on some recording, and that is official. I have met with a producer who is actually someone I've looked up to for quite some time. His name is Wally Joseph. He is working with Pacific Underground Recordings, and he is also the singer, frontman person, of a band called Skywind. Skywind was very, very popular in the Twin Cities area in the early 2000s, and they got some national, I think they got some national recognition. Uh, and, and as local bands do, they maybe, uh, they fell uh, aside for a while, worked on different projects, but they're back. They have a new record out uh, recently. It sounds super great. I'm really excited about it. And I know that uh, Wally is a really, really great person. So we've met, we've talked about the recordings that I want to do primarily somewhere in Dreamworld. Now you're saying, wait, you want to record this podcast? No, correction. There's an album called Somewhere in Dreamworld. There's a song called Somewhere in Dreamworld, which is the intro music to the podcast Somewhere in Dreamworld. So I have a little bit of a branding thing going on here. But the thing that came first before all of it, well, actually, the song was the first thing. And then I decided the album's name should be Somewhere in Dreamworld. And so it just kind of Hey, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I might have come up with the album title first and just named the track because nowhere in the song Somewhere in Dreamworld do I say the words Somewhere in Dream. It's just named that. So maybe I came up with the album title first. I don't know. But it was over 10 years ago, the first time that I decided to press record. I was going to college for audio production and I, I said, I want to record an album. I have new songs. I want to put them down. We recorded it like once almost all the way through and then I learned some new things I recorded it a second time learned some more new things recorded a third time graduated and then didn't have any access to the studios and all the equipment I was using to record and edit it so I saved up all this money and I bought some home recording equipment and I started working on it again and then I started changing songs and rewriting songs and adding new songs, and it's changed so many times. And then the last time I tried to work on it, I accidentally wrote some new songs and put out a completely different EP, the March to Midnight EP, which is available on iTunes, CD Baby. You can hear it on Spotify. It's on YouTube. It's everywhere you can find music. Uh, so check that out, March to Midnight. It has a few of the songs on it that you hear on this podcast as well. But uh, so I tried to work on Somewhere in Dreamworld, but I just could I just couldn't get it. I, I kept writing new material. Well, now is the time. I don't want to release the new stuff before I get the old stuff out. Someone told me recently a quote that I love. I love so much. They said that writers write books to forget them and readers read them to remember them. And I understand that because as a writer myself, both as an author and a songwriter, I have all of these ideas in my head and I love them to death. But what I want more than anything is to get them out. I don't want to forget about them. I want to be able to continually play them and play them for people and share them for people. But there's something about having it in your head and not being able to share that with others. So I've decided it's time to hire somebody that knows what they're doing that can help me bring this dream to reality. So in order to do that, because it's coming up very soon, I hope to press record on that before the end of November. I am hereby announcing that the Somewhere in Dreamworld podcast will take a slight hiatus so that I can focus on this record. I will upload episodes whenever I'm able, but for now we'll we'll end the weekly sessions and I'll get back to you another time. I will continue though, I promise you that. I'm just taking a slight holiday break to work on the record and I can't wait to play it for you. It's going to be amazing. So with that, we've reached the end of the episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you for continuing to listen through 10 episodes. I'm excited for the next 10. Please keep submitting your dreams by emailing them at podcast at midnightnotion.com or phoning them in at 612-643-0944. As always, I've been your host, Bryce Colla. This episode could have been brought to you by Keys. And hey, if you like what you're hearing and you want to hear more, you can show your support by hitting that like button, hitting the subscribe button, leaving a comment, leaving a review, share it with your friends, get the word out there, and let's share all these dreams with the world. 
Anywho, until next time, sleep well, dream well, and be well.